Hey everybody, it's Nick here and welcome to getting started with HDRI Studio Rig from Grayscale Gorilla. We created this plugin to make it easy for you to add reflections, lighting, and background right here in Cinema 4D using the physical render. So let's get started. So we have our scene here, we have some nice reflective materials using physical render, and we even have this uh, fake reflection from our viewport since we're using a newer version of Cinema 4D. But when we click render, nothing happens. Uh, we get a blank screen. And that's because we have no real lights or HDRI here in the scene. And this is exactly why we created HDRI Studio Rig, and we're gonna be using the Plus version. If you're a Plus member, you get access to all of our plugins here. And if you are using an older version of HDRI Studio Rig, you're gonna find it in your extensions menu. For this training, we're gonna be using the Plus version right here. Let's just go ahead and add it to the scene. Now, by default, HDRI Studio Rig has a seamless floor built in, and we're gonna be talking about that in just a few moments, but for now, we can just turn it off. Go into your seamless floor controls and turn off floor with this checkbox right here. Now, we have real beautiful reflections, lighting, and a background that we can change here using just this one plugin. Now, uh, of course, when we hit render, we also see that we now have a real render because we have an HDR set up, we have a background set up, and it's all fully controllable here with just HDRI Studio Rig. Okay, so let's first talk about how to change your HDRI. We made this really easy. First of all, if you go to your HDR Studio Rig controls, if you click on Open Plus Library, it's gonna open it up for you and you can select from hundreds of different HDRs that instantly show up in your viewport. So let's just click a couple of these to see uh, some different options. Like that one's got some nice reflections. We even have some Pro Studios here. And Pro Studios Metal might be perfect for this job. We have some really beautiful soft boxes here. Let's try this one. And let's rotate it around and get it a little bit dialed in. So you can see uh, we also have this rotation control that allows us to easily dial in the look that we're going for and see if it fits our render. And if it doesn't, you can really simply open up your Plus library, or if you're like me and you have the Plus library docked in your Cinema 4D interface, you can just come down here and select from any one of these um, HDRs just by clicking right on it. Okay, we'll probably change some more HDRIs later, but for now, let's go ahead and talk about some of the other settings. Now, if we hit render again, you're gonna see that we get a nice set of reflections, but we are getting a little bit of grain in our um, materials. And if you're seeing any shadows in your scene, you might see some grain there as well. Well, this is exactly why we added this insert render settings button here in HDRI Studio Rig. So let's go ahead and click insert render settings, and it's going to take us right into our render settings. And let's quickly talk about these. Um, these are render settings that are handmade for the physical render in Cinema 4D. And if you've ever tried to dial in the physical render settings, you know that it could always be really tricky to find the balance between low grain and uh, a fast render. And that's exactly what we've done here is give you some options to essentially let you decide how long you have to wait for your render and uh, for the faster renderer, you're just gonna get more grain in return. The good news is, is all of these presets work great with animation, uh, which if you've ever tried to do global illumination um, with, uh, with, with physical render, you may have seen quite a lot of splotchiness and, and other artifacts. Uh, we got rid of all of that here. So let's click something like global illumination medium and let's click uh, render. You're gonna see uh, we get much cleaner reflections now. We have much less grain in our reflections. And in the next scene, I'm gonna show you how this works with shadows on the ground. Because in this scene, you don't necessarily need a ton of global illumination. We don't really, we just have these shiny objects and it's not really casting any shadows on the floor. So we can actually go to our ambient occlusion uh, presets and get a much faster renderer without global illumination and you can see it renders very quickly here in physical render and it looks really, really great. And of course, if you wanna change the look, you can go right up in here uh, in your plus library, simply click on a new 
uh, HDR and it'll instantly load right into your scene. You could use your um, rotation controls to dial in your look. I like this really glossy top lit look. And again, just one click away and you are rendering right here within physical render. Okay, let's talk about the seamless floor controls. You can come in here and change the background gradient. Uh, you could change the gradient type. And you could also add some gradient turbulence here as well. So in, in fact, if you wanted a darker look, maybe you wanted it more against a blacker background here, dial in something a little bit more, uh, a little darker. We still have this nice gradient effect from the center to the edge. And again, you could dial this in with whatever your brand colors are, whatever you're trying to achieve for your client. Okay, one more thing about render settings. You may come across this example where it looks good in your viewport, you dial in your reflections, and even when you go add your insert render settings, uh, by default you hit render and yuck, right? Tons of grain, how do we fix this? Well, by default, the render settings are uh, set up so that you could work fast and see results very quickly. And this just means a lot of grain. You can also go to the progressive mode. And of course, when you hit render here in your viewport or in your uh, picture viewer, you're gonna see better and better results the longer you wait. And now again, this is only for testing and kind of seeing how your reflections look over time. When you finally do a final render, you're gonna wanna pick the highest one you can uh, basically wait for. If you're doing a still image, I would recommend GI high or super high. So you can see as we go up here, I'm just gonna click high and do a render uh, to the picture viewer. And you can see the high settings look way better, way less grain in the uh, reflections, way less grain in the shadows. You can see the reflection on the floor looks really nice. But of course, because we're using physical render, it does take a little bit of extra time. But again, if you have the time to do this, uh, if you're not doing a long animation, I recommend setting these settings pretty high when you go to do your final render. Okay, and now with that, let's jump into another scene file. Let's talk about the seamless floor and some shadows. All right, here we are with the same petals here. You can see that in this scene, we're going for more of a product look that's gonna be sitting on the floor and giving us some nice shadows. So let me show you how to set that up using HDRI Studio Rig. All right, come up to your Grayscale Gorilla menu. Let's select HDRI Studio Rig Plus. And already in the scene, you're gonna see we have uh, instant access to our HDR that we could rotate around. Of course, we could change our HDR here using the Plus library. And again, you get all of these um, uh, HDRIs that are included in your Plus membership as well. Okay, let's try this one for now. Let's rotate it around and get a nice front reflection here. And you can see that when we hit render, because we've added HDRI Studio Rig, we do get the background, we do get the nice reflections, but we have no shadows. Well, again, this is where our insert render settings comes in. Let's go ahead and click that button and go to Global Illumination Medium. And right away, as soon as we hit render, not only are you gonna get a seamless floor, but you're going to get uh, beautiful shadows that are created from the HDR. So depending on what HDR you select, uh, you're going to get different styles, colors, and types of shadows on the floor. So let's actually move this down and let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. If we were to pick something with a little bit more color, um, you're gonna see that not only are our reflections much more colorful, but also our floor is picking up some of the color and shadow detail from this HDR. And we made this really easy to do with HDRI Studio Rig, and it's all built right into this plugin. So let's talk about some of the other settings that you have access to with this plugin. So. First of all, you have your brightness of your HDRI. You have the reflective brightness of the HDRI if you wanna dial that in separately. And if you uh, want to blur your reflections or your luminance here, you also have that available as well. This gives you a little bit uh, rounder and softer uh, reflections and shadows if your shadows are 
a little too sharp or a little too direct, you can just soften it right here in the texture. You also, uh, we've already played around with the reflection. You get these beautiful reflections here. Um, and then we have this preview. Now preview is really helpful if you, um, uh, let, let me just go ahead and shrink this down. Preview is very helpful if you have a scene that isn't showing you these reflections built right in. So if you're using an older version of Cinema 4D, or you don't have these settings turned on where you get to see the reflections in your viewport, the um, uh, preview will show you a preview of your HDRI right within the scene here, and you can then rotate it around and see where your key light is and stuff like that. Okay, let's go ahead and turn that off. Fill light adds a nice fill light to your scene, and really, if anything's too dark, you can always brighten things up with the fill light and also use the fill color as well. Now, these um, should be self-explanatory, but we also have color correction for your HDRI, including contrast, where you can lower the contrast of your HDRI, uh, your saturation, so maybe you like the lighting but not the color, you can dip that down a little bit. And then, of course, you could change the hue and the brightness right down here as well. You could also show your HDRI right in the background just by turning this on, and you can see now the HDRI shows up in the background if you want looks like that. Gonna go ahead uh, and turn that off. You could also add your own custom background if you have a plate for the background, it's built right in. Um, then we have some other extra options, just things like the global illumination light that we just suggest you leave all of this stuff on by default unless you have a really specific case. Okay, let's talk about the seamless floor. Okay, if we go to the seamless floor, let's go ahead and hit render and see where we are with our seamless floor. And uh, this is, this is looking pretty good. We, we have our uh, shadow going out to the left here. Um, and of course we're on this uh, gradient background from white to a little bit lighter white, like this little gray here. So you, of course you could change this. You could change it to a brand color. Let's uh, make this crazy kind of uh, reddish orange kind of color. You know me, I like that. And uh, if you don't want a gradient, you could just remove one of those options or one of those knots there, and now you have this beautiful red background. It's even picking up the reflection in the actual screws and everything there. Um, and then of course, you've seen that you could turn off the floor if you need to, uh, and you can also turn off the background if you want, and you just can use it if you're trying to do this on an alpha channel, or you wanna replace it with a different background like we talked about before. All right, last thing I'll show you is the floor reflection. Let's turn on our background and our floor. And you can see just by turning up the floor reflection, you're going to get um, reflection from your, uh, your objects that are sitting there. Uh, and let me show you how to dial this in to make it look a little bit more realistic. You could turn on Fresnel, and this will help if you have a camera moving around. It's gonna give you more realistic floor reflections. And then of course, a little bit of reflection uh, blur on the floor is going to help this look as well. So this still might be dialed in a little bit too bright for reflective floor. Let's go ahead and dial the overall reflection down and let's dive back into our uh, insert render settings, into our render settings here in Cinema 4D to dial in the final look for this scene. So here we are, we're currently using global illumination medium. We're still getting a little bit more grain, but you can see we have higher res presets. I recommend working in lower res versions of these. And in fact, we have a progressive render version, which is really helpful because this allows you to use the interactive render region and it will start very grainy. And then over time, it's going to refine itself and make it higher and higher quality. Now, this is really nice if you wanna use the rotation to dial in a look. Maybe we want to go back in and try a, a different um, HDR. And again, we can move our reflections around, let go, and very quickly see some results. I'm gonna to try to angle up at this a little bit more and get a little bit more light on the floor. And this might help a little bit, maybe a little bit more brightness as well. All right, so we have our nice reflections going here. Um, and let's go ahead and set up our final render settings. Uh, let's go to render settings. Let's go to um, uh, global illumination high. I don't think we need super high for this one. Let's go to high. Uh, and this background is just a little much. So let's bring it back to something uh, a little bit back to where we were. 
I'm just adding a knot here in our um, uh, color picker, adding our gradient back. And you can see we do have some nice shadows going on. And that is looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and do a final render here in the picture viewer. You're gonna see our reflections are all dialed in. We have our shadow on the floor. And all of this is here using the HDRI Studio Rig Plus. And of course, uh, you have access to all of these HDRIs and all of these plugins here at Grayscale Gorilla Plus. All of these plugins here so that you could dial in your final look using HDRIs, lighting, uh, materials, it's all here with Grayscale Gorilla Plus to help you render and make more beautiful renders in less time. Thank you guys once again for checking out Getting Started with HDRI Studio Rig. If you're a Plus member, I wanted to thank you guys. And if you're not a member of Grayscale Gorilla Plus, now's a great time to come join and get not only these tools, but everything else we have here at Grayscale Gorilla. All right, I will see you guys in another video. See you soon.